Hey YouTube, welcome to Herbie's Reef. David and Emily here, and we're gonna do a quick tank update. We've had a whole lot of changes since the fire video, um, and as I showed you before, we've got the four radions going now, and all of our corals seem to have uh, bounced into the radions just fine. We already had two, so to add two more doesn't seem to have bothered them, and to switch them out for the, uh, switch the T5s out has been no big deal. Um, we have moved a few things around. You can see that our clam, he, we had him back here, and uh, for whatever reason, he kept, I got up, he wasn't opening some, as much. Um, he would spend one day closed, one day open. And I got up in the middle of the night and I noticed that our peppermint shrimp, who only comes out at night, was just digging into his shell, trying to peel him open. So I moved him further away because the peppermint shrimp's pretty shy. So I pulled him away from the rock work, hoping that um, that, that would discourage the peppermint shrimp and it seems to have worked because um, you can see he is super happy today um, he's really growing let me see if when he's this open it's so hard to see um, the peppermint shrimp has a name its name is cinnamon yeah i get in trouble about names i don't know any of our fish's names but emily's real big on on the fish having names um anyhow i can't see the scoots so i can't really show you the shell where he's growing but um but he's definitely grown so much and uh, I, I hope he's happy because um, he's truly, if anything in my tank died, he would be in the top three things that would make me sad. Um, so I hope he'll be all right. I almost moved him to our new frag tank this week to keep him away from the peppermint shrimp, but, um, but he seems to be better. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a little longer. Um, and then here's our Christmas tree worm rot and, uh, and the parietes. Um, and the Christmas tree worms seem to be growing a little bit. I'm anxious to see if they'll grow more. I've been putting some phytoplankton in here and reefroids and stuff that hopefully they like. Um, and then we've still got this um, forest fire and it still does not have any green or blue or yellow on the tips like they can get. So hopefully it is truly a forest fire. I think maybe I see a little color developing in it and it, it looks much pinker in person than it does on this video because I have the gel filter on to knock the blues out and uh, it oranges it up a bit. So you don't get a full picture, but I, I'm leaning, I was thinking maybe it was just a regular Monopora um, digitalis, but, but the more it grows, the more I'm thinking it's uh, truly a forest fire. And then uh, I'll do a zoom in the best I can on this home wrecker. You can see that the polyps are much more extended than they were last time, and the color doesn't show through quite as well on the video but the top has turned a yellow and um okay. so the and kind of a purple on top so it, the colors are coming out more the polyps are also slightly green yeah and then uh there's the pink lemonade we moved that back some um to keep it a little further from the home record just so that they wouldn't eventually grow into each other and it actually seems to be happier than it was closer to the home record so that's been a good move for it okay and then we've got, um, there's the jolt. So the jolt has not colored up at all. The polyps, um, you can't see them as well from this side, but there are some on the other side that are out. And it looks very similar. This was a what you see is what you get. And I knew I was getting a duller looking jolt. Um, but Jason says it's fine and that it's just because of the area it was cut from and that it will color up over time. Um, so I'm willing to wait. And uh, one day this will be a beautiful acro. We still are having our issues with this anemone. I'm going to try putting a power head on him again. I've done this several times, but I'm gonna maybe try for, I've only done it for an hour or so where I've blown him with a power head trying to get him to move. Um, but uh, I'm gonna do it again and maybe blow him for a full day and just see if I can get him out of there. I, I love the anemone. It's probably the prettiest little branch of anemone I have, but I, I don't like it there. It get, gets really close to that jolt when it's fully open. And if you have any other suggestions on how to get rid of that thing, um, then leave it down in the comments below and yeah. And we'll give it a shot. We're desperate to get this thing out of here without damaging the tank. I actually moved that whole rock to the left side and um, it, one of, we, we had added a new ruby dragonette and um, mm -hmm. it, actually, it actually jumped out and we didn't notice it. Then we have this tight fitting lid and out of all things I lost a fish to it jumping out when I was moving a rock. Um, so we were really sad about that. Um, and we also put a yellow chorus wrasse in here and it was picked on by this guy right here, Megatron. And uh, 
and also Daisy right, right there. They picked on it a little bit. It was only like five minutes and he hid and we've never seen him again. So I don't know if he's dead or he's still hiding, but obviously I should have used a peacemaker type box to keep him in for a while and uh, get him used to it. But uh, too late for that now. And our acros here on the arch are doing really well. Um, so these, these acros are, are still growing well. You can see the green one back there. The green stylo has really grown a lot and this uh, Hawkins and Kanata has really grown. It's starting to encrust on the bottom part. I'll try to zoom in and see if we can catch it. You can see it's kind of hitting the rock and actually left the frag plug sun. So that's cool, we're anxious. For that thing to start covering the whole area um, and then this guy is about to do the same the Solomon Island tort is what it's called and then there's our zoas back here I'm gonna start taking some of these out and putting them in the frag tank and growing some of these this is the one we got from Jason Fox and I got a lot of comments that they look just like orange Bam Bams and they do with this gel filter on you could see them on person in person though they're truly a unique color they're very pinky orange uh, yeah a reddish pink orange color not near as uh, bland as they look with the gel filter they're about the same color as a um, pink gonophora or I think it's called a red cherry gonophora over here which also the hue is messed with on the gel filter but in real life if you've ever seen one it's around the same color except for maybe a little redder. Yeah. And then our uh, Elegance is Happy. It's been doing, it's a great addition. One of my, I, I just love this thing. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy we got that. And then here's our jack-o'-lantern and it is still not very happy. We've moved it fully out in the light because I keep putting it in places that are semi-dark because um, I've read they don't love a lot of light, but you can see the edges are kind of dying off and it seems to have progressed and not done better since I put it in the light. I'm hoping it'll just be something that is a slow change and it'll gradually get better again. Um, I've got it right over 100 um, par here because I've got this, this side, I've got the radions turned way down on compared to the other side. So I hope it'll pick back up and color up again. Um, and then you can see our Monty cap here. This is the Cold Fusion, Chase and Fox Cold Fusion. And it's really colored up. Um, so I'm, I'm anxious to see how this thing will grow. I think it's gonna be beautiful. And that is most of what we've got in this tank. Um, so I'm gonna show you what we've added. You can see, oh, and let me show you this tank with the filter off just so you can see that. I don't think you'll be able to tell the color of this um, Zoa because of the blues just get so washed out. but but we'll give it a shot. So that's with the gel filter off. And you guys can leave in the comments if you like it without the gel filter, um, but I think it's probably too blue. So in an effort to keep this from beginning too long, I'll just show you our other updates. If you notice, we've taken all that calcium reactor, the top off and the chiller that were here, and we've moved them around back um, into a room we've built. So I will stop the video here and uh, meet you in the fish room. So, Excuse the tools because we're still, this is still a work in progress, but this closet is now the fish room. So you can see I've moved all my wiring to this electric board and everything that plugs in is now in this room so that if water, that water is less likely to drip on it. I could still have a leak in the frag tank and, uh, and have it dripped on, but it'd be unlikely just because of the way uh, the frag tank sit, sits and the overflow is in the back. So I think we're going to be good to go on this. And then here's our new frag tank. It's just a 40 gallon breeder. I've put two Vortex in, MP10s, one on each side. And, um, and then I just have a few frags so far. We have that Hollywood Stunner, and maybe I should put that gel filter back on. It's pretty blue. Um, but I've got two of those green bird's nests, and then I've got a pink bird's nest, which is near death because my anemone was stinging it. And we'll put the gel filter on. Oh. Um, my anemone was stinging it, so it just almost died in that other tank. Um, so I've got it in here, and then we have two of the, I don't, I don't know if I can catch them, but two of the baby anemones that have split off of that. Um, so if anyone lives in the Dallas area, we live pretty far east of Dallas, maybe 40 minutes, and if they would like to buy an anemone, we have several. 
And then I just, this is one of those SB Reef lights. They cost about 130 bucks, and they come from China, and it takes forever. They have terrible customer service, but it does seem to be a pretty decent light. Um, I checked the PAR levels, and I don't have it all the way up, and it's around at 330, 400, right in the middle. And uh, on the edges, it gets goes to uh, 200. Um, and then uh, the clowns, we put the clowns that were in our quarantine tank. We're going to take the quarantine tank down because we're pretty well done adding fish for now. Um, so we have these two little clowns, and I'm sorry the glass is not clean. I've ordered magnets for this tank, but I don't have uh, magnet cleaners right now. And I've ordered a cleanup crew, but I don't have one yet. I ordered it from uh, reefcleaners.com. I've ordered cleanup crews from them a lot, and I'm pretty happy with their rock and their... Their cleanup crews are really pretty good. Um, so we've got these two little clowns in here. I'd hope they'd decide to go uh, to one of the anemones, but they they typically like anemones, but they don't want to go that high of the, in the tank, I don't think. And these anemones have decided that that's where they belong. Um, so anyhow, that's them. And then I've got the calcium reactor down here. And I've got the, uh, there's the peristaltic pump. And I'm gonna make, I'm still working on that video. The fire really slowed us down, but um, but I'm still working on that video. Hopefully I'll have it out in the next few days. Then I just moved my top off water here for now. I may, I, I'm scared to combine it. I, I also, I made my water station over here. I've got, um, this is RODI water and that's my RODI unit. I have the Spectra Pure and a booster pump up there. And, um, and then I've got the Avast Marine barrel tender, which it turns the top off on automatically when it reaches the bottom of this and then it will fill it to the top and then it won't fill again until it reaches the bottom and that just saves on your filter um, so that you're not constantly washing the high TDS water through. And then I've got another trash can here and we keep salt water in there and I've ordered some dose pumps to hook to my Neptune and we're going to do a constant water change, a continuous water change on, uh, on that big tank and that will, uh, will change three gallons a day, I think I decided. So that's right around 21 gallons a week. Right now I do um, 15 to 20 gallons a week, but, but you lose a little bit of efficiency when you do the continuous water change. So I'm gonna go to uh, 21. And then we'll, uh, we'll do frequent sand cleaning where I just, I'll, I'll run the, um, I'll filter the sand down to the sump. I'll just run the siphon down to the sump rather than having to carry buckets around that way. Um, so that's pretty much it, most of our update, and uh, we're going to work on that calcium reactor video now, hopefully have it to you soon. So if you guys have any questions, uh, send them to us. We thank you, everyone who has subscribed, and we'd appreciate any that haven't. If you'd subscribe and like the video um, and share it with others, and hopefully this channel will um, become more popular. Thanks for mm -hmm. watching. Bye.